fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hardy Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Outlaws roamed the range country in the early days of the western United States, and even the local sheriffs and judges were sometimes outlaws within the protection of the law. It was then that the masked rider of the plains rode in the cause of justice. Ranchers and sheep herders, miners and storekeepers appealed to him for help, and no honest man was ever disappointed. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Sun is waiting for us on the trail ahead! Hi, oh, Silver! Away! The town of Springville, near the eastern border of Texas, had experienced Indian uprisings and outlaw raids during the early years of its history. But at the time our story opens, Indians and outlaws were a thing of the past, and Springville was as peaceful as any New England village. It was an unusual occurrence when anyone was arrested, and the little courthouse was filled on the morning Bill Stevens was brought before Judge Ezra Eccles. Quiet in this here courtroom. Quiet, I say. Well, Judge, what's the verdict? According to law number 214, section 5, it's a misdemeanor for any individual except in a duly recognized lawman to carry any weapon concealed. By jumping, Juniper, my shooting iron wasn't concealed. I told it in plain sight on the right hip. Comes under the head of concealed weapons just the same. The law further states that the penalty for the same is not more than $100 fine and 90 days in the jail, or both. I never heard of no such law. Well, you're hearing of it now. How do you plead, guilty or otherwise? Huh? Did you tote a gun or did you not? Gosh, everyone knows a total one. Then you I'll... plead guilty. Well, I... Plead otherwise, and there's a law that'll jail you for perjury. What's that? Lying on the witness stand while under oath. Oh, things went along swell here till you found that doggone law book. Now there's a blame many laws a man can't turn without busting a half a dozen of them. Guilty or not guilty? Well, would you let me off the cheapest? Your fine's $100 for packing a gun. If you can't pay it, you can go to jail for 90 days. Perjury will cost you $200. Uh... I reckon I'll choose the other. One hundred dollars fine. Most every dad rat a dime I got. Pay for it over there and the sheriff will give you a receipt for it. There's your money, blast it. Now all I got left is ten bucks. Mm, still got ten bucks, huh? This town's getting worse all the time. I don't know what... What is that last remark, Stevens? I says this blame town's getting worse all the time. He's still got ten dollars. Stevens, you're fined ten dollars for contempt of court. What? Statute 211, Section 14. Maximum... Look here, Judge. I don't care about statutes and less sections. Just tell me this. How much is this here gun worth? Why? You think I could raise enough on it to pay the fine for unlimbering my tongue and tell them what I think of this deal? That'll do. Court's dismissed. Oh, by thunder, I don't know You'd better get out, Stevens, while you got the chance. You might land in the calaboose yet. All right, folks. Court's dismissed. All of you clear out. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, it worked, Judge. I told you it would, didn't I? Hundred and ten dollars. Mm, let me see. Two and a hundred ten makes uh, fifty-five dollars each. Mm -hmm. And we're just getting started, Sheriff. <laughs> just getting started. Gosh. With me to dig up laws that never were enforced, and you to do the arresting, and me to find people we'll clean up. It sure was smart of you to think of this. <laughs> it shows what an education will do. But I was thinking. Yeah? After today, it ain't likely any of the folks in town will risk wearing their shooting irons. So I won't have no chance of arresting them on that charge again. Maybe not. But there'll be strangers in town. Yeah, I never thought of that. And that isn't all. Huh? You see this book, Sheriff? Yeah, but I... I've been going through it carefully. And you'd be surprised at the laws that have been passed in this town and forgotten. <laughs> forgotten, huh? Mm-hmm. Fifteen years ago, there was a law passed about hitching horses on the main street. Sheik's alive. That's a new one on me. And it'll be new to everyone else. Here's another, saying that cows can't be driven through town. Yeah? And there's a curfew law for the young uns. Uh, but don't we have to make a report on the cash we take in from fines? <laughs> Sheriff, you and me are going to take in money so fast, anything we report will look all right. We've found a scheme that'll make us rich. Rich beyond our wildest dreams. <laughs> During the two weeks that followed, man after man was arrested by the sheriff and fined by the judge. The townspeople were indignant, but there was nothing they could do. Then, one day, the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, rode toward town. It's been a long time since we were in this part of the country, Tonto. Uh -huh. We'll stop in town for supplies and head for the hills. You look. You see, cowman? Yes, and a good-looking herd. Why him drive them off trail? That's strange. If he's taking those cows through town, it'd be easier to follow the trail. Not right. But he seems to want to circle the town. Not bad ground. He's deliberately sending them off the trail over that swampy ground. Why him do that? We'll find out. Come on there, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Last to get along there. Hey, you, Get back off the trail. Hello there. Howdy, stranger. Come on, come on. Oh, 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 Silver, hold oh, 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 That's hard going for your cattle. Stranger, you said... Hey, that mask. Keep your hand away from your gun. I ain't got a gun, stranger. Don't rob an unprotected man. Land sakes, we can't pack guns when we're right at the mercy of men like I'm you. I'm not going to rob you. But, but the mask... Pay no attention to it. You need help with that herd. I need a lot, thanks to the way they're doing things in town. What do you mean? Doggone, look at those critters. The minute I stop, they start grazing. If it weren't for them laws, I could take them through the town and save going around this ground. That's interesting. Fact is, if it weren't for the laws, I wouldn't have to sell them in the first place. Why is that? Well, a couple of weeks ago, I got arrested for lugging a shooting iron and fined of all my cash money. Then a couple of days later, I was fined for sassing the sheriff and had to sell my gun to pay the fine. And I couldn't carry it anyhow. Then I got fined for taking cows along the main street of the town, which same is the only street. And now I got to sell these critters to pay that fine. Shucks, if I got fined for taking these through town, I'd land in the calaboose for sure on account I can't raise no more cash. Those seem to be mighty strange laws for a cow town. They're strange laws for any town. Trouble is, they was made when we had blame fool committee running the town a few years back. And each of the committee wanted to make as many laws as the others on that same committee. I see. Stranger, take some advice from me. Don't you show yourself with that mask and them two guns. By thunder, they'd find laws to take all your cash no matter how much you had. We'll help you get your herd around the town. I want to hear more about these laws and their enforcement. Well, I can tell you plenty from my own experience. Get up. Get on there. Get up there. Tonto, instead of going into town, we'll camp outside when we finish helping this man. Mm, I'm good. There seems to be a situation in town that we can do something about. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. I want you to go into town. What me do there? Perhaps go to jail. Hmm? Take some money along with you. Oh, uh, go to cafe? Any place where it'll be noticed that you have cash. Mm -hmm. Me do that. You might buy some food and pay for it with a fairly large coin, a gold coin. See how long it takes for the sheriff to find some law in which you can be arrested. Hmm. Hmm. Now bacon ready. Very well. 
We'll eat, and then you can get started. If you're arrested, refuse to pay the fine and let them send you to jail. <laughs> You've got scheme, huh? Perhaps I have. <laughs> Things are, as Bill Stevens said, there are two men in that town who need a lesson. Mm, that right. And we'll do our best to give it to them. You want it packed up, Redskin? Now, let me see the color of your money. Here, yeah, money. Just a second. What's the matter, Sheriff? Now, don't butt in, bartender. I've been waiting to see if he'd have cash for that grub. Whose gold is that? It's mine. Mm, looks downright suspicious. Got any more of them gold pieces? Now, look here, Sheriff. You ain't going Bartender, to... you want me to arrest you for something? No, no, I ain't said nothing. Well, see to it that you don't. Mm. Uh, now then, Injun, where's your gun? Me not got gun. What, no gun? No. Hmm. Too bad. Uh, let me see. Oh, that's your horse tied right at the hitch rack outside, ain't it? Didn't you know it's again the law to hitch a horse on the main street? That's not my horse. Me walk to town. Huh? You mean to say with all that cash you ain't got no horse? Me not got him here. Barkeep, are you grinning? Me? No, oh, sirree. Injun, it's a downright serious crime in this town for Injuns to use tobacco or liquor. Now, if you've got a pipe... Me not use pipe. You don't smoke? Don't shawl? Well, answer up. Don't shake your head like that. A sheriff, I got the right to demand verbal answers. Me not use tobacco. Mm. Injun, have you heard about this here town? Uh, me hear all about town. Well, stand right there. Don't you go away now. Gotta give a look at the judge's book. Let me see. Law pertaining to engine. I reckon I better give you change for this gold piece, engine. Here, hold on. Engine, you're under arrest. He's found something. Didn't you know that it was again the law for Redskins to come to town without first reporting to the sheriff's office? No. That settles it. Well, not knowing the law ain't no excuse for busting it. You're under arrest. What about my cash for them vittles? Ain't likely he'll need them. Less than he can pay the fine, the judge will meet out. Put him back in the kitchen till after he's tried. I never heard of that law, Sheriff. It's a law the town council passed right after the engine trouble. That was 30 years ago. The law ain't like a human being, bartender. No matter how old it gets, it never loses its teeth. <laughs> Golly, I'm getting near as smart as the judge. What law say? It says no engine can come to town without first he reports to the sheriff's office. Now, what's the sense in that? Blindy! It's so a whole passel of redskins can't come into town and massacre us in our beds. This redskin's the first I've seen in a month. You don't figure he'd scare up the whole town, do you? Take my job to criticize the law. I got enough to do seeing it's obeyed. Come along, Injun. We're calling on the judge. Me come. Watch out, redskin. The judge will take your eye teeth if you open your mouth wide. You be careful, bartender. I'll hold you up before the judge for declamation of character or something. Out this door, Injun. Just a step over to the courthouse. The judge is there, all right. I can see him through the window. That courthouse? Just go up the steps and inside. Won't do you no good to try to get away, neither. Me not try and get away. Hey, uh, Judge. Come in, Sheriff. Go ahead, Injun. Judge, I brung you another lawbreaker. Ah. What'd this one do, Sheriff? He didn't report to my office like the law says he should. This is it right here in black and white. Ah, oh, that's mighty serious, Redskin. Of course you're guilty, ain't uh, you? Uh, then the fine will be, uh, now... Maybe uh, about $50. Yes, $50 or 30 days in jail. Me not pay fine. What's that? Me take 30 days. Then 30 days you'll get. Jail him, Sheriff. Right. Reckon he'll change his mind after a few days in jail. Oh, Who was that? Sounded like a stranger to me, Judge. Stranger, eh? Well, if you find him, arrest him for disturbing the peace. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Thank you.
Now to continue our story. On the evening of the day Tonto was arrested and jailed, Bill Stevens, the judge's first victim, was talking to the bartender in the cafe. Yes, sir, Bill. That engine wasn't doing anything at all. But the sheriff, he up and jailed him like he'd shot up the town. Blasted crook. Him and the judge both. I was the first one they got, and they've fined me three times since. It's getting so a fella has to be a lawyer to know if it's legal to go to bed at night. And if you found out it was, you'd probably be jailed for waking up in the morning. Honest, Bill, I never heard of so many fool laws. You can't do this, and you can't do that. But you never find out what you can't do till after you've done it. And then it costs you cash for education. I'd like to meet up with them crooks some dark night, and I can... Where did it come from? Watch out! What the? Leaping catfish, an outlaw! Bill Stevens. You! Come outside. But, mister, I'll be fine for talking to a masked man with guns. That's what I want to talk to you about. But don't, don't shoot us, mister. No one will be hurt. Well, what do you want to talk to me for? I want your help, Bill. Stand back. Everyone's covered. My help? Bill, the sheriff and the judge have cost you money. They've cost me more than I could spare. Would you like to get it back? Get it back? Shucks, ain't a chance of that. Come outside and I'll show you that there is. Yeah? Come. I'll go. Stranger, I learned to like your style. The masked man talked to Bill and explained his plan. The rancher smiled for the first time in days and returned to the cafe. Then the Lone Ranger called on another leading citizen of the town. Oh, Silver. Oh, old fellow. Oh, boy. Stay here, old fellow. Jay, I want to speak to you. Who's that? Open the door. Just wait till I unlock it. Now, where do you... A mask man. I'm not an outlaw, Jake. But what are you wearing? Stevens gave me your name. You'll be glad to hear what I have to say. Then you'll do it, Hank. Jake said I could count on you. Stranger, you can bank on me to the finish. <laughs> Tell everyone you know. Yeah. If we act together, we'll make the sheriff and the judge sorry they found those old laws. Yeah. <laughs> the Lone Ranger's plan spread by word of mouth and changed the mood of all the townspeople. The sheriff discovered the change on the following day when Bill Stevens rode up the main street to the cafe. Whoa, whoa there, whoa, fella. Well, I'll be... Stevens! What's ailing you, Sheriff? Stay right where you are! You look all head up, Sheriff. Eat something that don't set well. Breaking the law again, huh? I thought I'd learned you your lesson of four. What lesson? Not to pack a gun in town. Well, I paid my fine, so I figured it'd be all right now. Besides, this here's an old one that ain't mine. I just borrowed it. <laughs> you did, huh? Well, get off on that horse. Anything you say, Sheriff. What do you aim to do? Let the judge deal with you. All right, if I gotta see him, I gotta. Let's get it over with. You walk ahead of me. <laughs> Thought you'd put something over on me, huh? Ooh, I don't know. But you didn't. Any time you get ahead of me, you'll have to get up mighty early in the morning. you got eyes like a hawk, sure enough. And it'd pay you not to forget it next time. Maybe you'll have something to remember, too. Yeah? That sounds like a threat to me. Well, Judge, I brought you Bill Stevens again. Well, well. Yep, I'm back, Judge. You're the most regular lawbreaker in these parts. The sheriff arrested me for wearing this here gun. Mm-hmm. Now, let me see. Fourth time you've been here, eh, Stevens? Uh-huh. That ought to cost more, oughtn't it, Judge? If we keep things on a legal basis, it should. Two hundred dollars in costs. That's the fine. Yep. And you've got to pay, even if you have to mortgage your ranch. It's either that or 90 days in the jailhouse. Let's get going, Sheriff. Huh? You fellas have every last penny I'd saved. This time, I'm going to jail. You... You haven't got $200? That's what I said, ain't it? Hmm, well, uh, stretching a point, Seedens. I might, uh... I might make it less. If you could pay it. Nope. I'll be lenient. How about a $50 fine? Not a penny. Hmm... What do you offer? I said not a penny, and that's what I meant. Stevens, you're a lawbreaker of the worst kind, a callous criminal. It's 90 days for you, and you can start serving them now. Sheriff, take the prisoner away. At 
As soon as Bill was jailed, the sound of cattle was heard outside, and the sheriff ran from the courthouse. What's that? Well, I'll be... Jake! Hey there! Jake! Whoa, cool there, boy. You calling me, Sheriff? Don't you know better to bring them critters to town? Yes, yeah, Sheriff. I clean forgot. Forgot? Hmm. But now you remind me, it seems that there was something said about that once before. It cost you $200. You ain't going to arrest me this time, are you, Sheriff? You trying to make an officer of the law forget his duty? Well, of course not. But it seems kind of hard being arrested just for a bad memory. Jake, we'll fix that memory of yours right now. Drive them critters to the corrals. Then get back here as fast as you can and see if the judge will listen to your excuses. Jake, like Tonto and Bill, refused to pay a fine and went to jail. In the days that followed, men were brought in by the dozens, and they all chose jail rather than pay a fine. The sheriff was worried when he locked the door of a cell on Hank Mahoney. Well, reckon that'll teach you, Hank. I'm satisfied if you are, Sheriff. Keep still, you fellas! Sheriff, we ain't getting enough grub! No! We ain't getting good enough grub. It's your duty to feed us in jail, and you ain't doing it. Shut up, I tell you! We want more grub! More grub, Sheriff! We want more grub! You're lasting. You're eating more than you're worth right now. I wish I'd have never seen a one of you. Now keep quiet! With the shouts of the prisoners ringing in his ears, the sheriff hurried to the courthouse. He found Judge Eccles in a bad temper. Well, what's the matter? Judge, something's got to be done. Yes? If I arrest one more feller, the jail will be so darn crowded it'll bust. That's your fault. My fault? If you can't arrest men who are willing to pay cash, don't come running to me. But look here, Judge. This was your scheme. You thought it all up. And it made us a pile of money. Well, it ain't no more. I know that as well as you do, you fool. I'm near crazy. Have you got any idea how much it's costing to keep them stubborn mavericks locked up? <laughs> I should say I have. You've come to me for cash often enough. Mm, I reckon you figure you ought to give half what we take in and let me pay all the expenses. I've been paying my share, Sheriff. Well, if them fellas stay in jail another week, I'm going to be flat busted. Uh, Maggie. Nate, I want to talk to you. No, honey. And don't honey me neither, Nate. I'm here to say just one thing. You can get somebody else to cook for them prisoners of yours, or you can get yourself another wife. Now, Maggie. Don't you Maggie me, Judge. It was your scheme to do this, and I'm worn to a frazzle. I'd rather cook for a gang of cowhands than for them fellows in your jail. But I couldn't help it. Not. Maybe you couldn't, but you're going to stop it now. Wait, I'll handle this. What can you do? You two follow me. I'm going to the jailhouse and talk to your prisoners. It's about time somebody done something about this here mess you two stirred up. I let them all out. Let them out? It's the only thing we can do. We'll still clear a little money if we get rid of them right now, Sheriff. Yeah, that's right. You'll settle this whether you clear any money or not. <laughs> They're yelling their heads off. Must have seen you coming, Judge. Well, when I get them out, I don't care if you never make another arrest. The cold are in. Got our grub first, Sheriff? Don't try no speeches on us, Judge. We want our grub. Now listen to me. What about our grub? Keep quiet and let me speak. I've talked things over with the Sheriff, and we've decided that you men have been punished enough. We're going to let you out. <laughs> But we ain't leaving, Judge. No, no. You put us here and we aim to serve out our terms as law-abiding citizens. Ain't that so, man? Yeah. But we let you go free. We let you free of fine. Uh, you gotta get out in here. <laughs> quiet. Quiet, fellas. We got a right to stay in jail. And we're gonna do that same. It's cheaper for us to stay here than any place else we know of. Yeah, Judge, what are we gonna do? I don't know. I... I'll tell you what you can do, Judge. A masked man. He's a crook, Judge. Sheriff, don't you dare arrest him. <laughs> I wouldn't jail another fella if he robbed the bank. <laughs> Sheriff, you and the judge were trying to rob the people in this town. You took advantage of old laws to put money into your own pockets. Listen, Mr. Mask Man, they can do what they darn please if they'll only go now. They'll leave if you do what I say. Uh, what's that? 
Return all the fines you took from them and resign from office. But, gosh, you can't Nate, expect... Nate, you do what this masked fella tells you. But... Uh... Make up your minds. Uh, are you sure they leave? What do you say, men? Yeah, but it'll take every penny we got to our name. You're lucky to be out of jail yourself. Uh, I reckon there ain't nothing to do but say yes, then. Uh, I'll do what you say, mister. And you, Judge? It, it looks like I'll have to. Very well. Unlock this door and let these men out. They can't leave any too soon to please me. <laughs> Come, Tonto. <laughs> Your plan plenty good, huh? <laughs> hey, Don't go yet. We thank you for what you've done. It isn't necessary, Bill. Sheriff, if you don't pay back the money you've taken, Tonto and I will return and see that you do. Gosh, Judge. Why did you have to think of them laws anyhow? Don't you ever mention laws or jails or fines to me again. Now then, open them jail doors while I get the cash together. Jim Hudson needs our help. Tonto's waiting for us. I O Silver, The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated.